Hi everyone, wanted to do a video on should you be a ServiceNow developer. It's what I've chosen to do, probably isn't right for everyone, but it is a good career. So let's start by going over what is ServiceNow. ServiceNow is a development platform. It mostly started with help desk tickets that uh, people wanted systems in their companies to be able to deal with computer issues. So somebody's laptop breaks. They want an automated way to be able to go in and get help with that versus just calling someone and having it be disorganized. So ServiceNow is much more than that now, but that is how it began. So it's a development platform where you develop applications and you do this sometimes using low code methods, sometimes using quite a bit of code. So ServiceNow starts with the out of the box functions. This comes with things like incidents and change requests. It's mostly centered around the IT space where if someone's computer is broken, you can help them fix it. If a major change is gonna be made to a server, you can schedule it, keep track of it. Everyone that's working on it can be in touch. So it is an information system. That's one of the, probably the biggest things to start with is that this is a system that works on a database. It's really just a beautiful front end for a database that is very highly customizable. So what you can do with ServiceNow is make your own applications for your own company. Every company is different and there are things that you're going to want to do that nothing out there is going to be able to do. But with ServiceNow, you can develop something and it's quick. You can have one or two developers develop a full-fledged application. It will look good, it will work well, and most of the, you know, setting up the database and everything is already taken care of. So what it basically does is allows the automation of processes, sometimes with using GUIs to do simple things, and then also with using scripts, especially when it comes to the front end. Now the front end nowadays is using what's called a service portal. This is a framework that ServiceNow uses. It uses Bootstrap and AngularJS. So knowing these things, if you're going to do service portal development is kind of important. It's going to be difficult to do too much without that. Now I will say there are some out of the box things that you can leverage, but if you really want to do what your company wants to do, then for service portal, that would be a good thing to know. That being said, not every ServiceNow developer knows how to do this. Most of ServiceNow development takes place in more of a process programming uh, thing. You, you, you do forms, you know, you create forms for people to fill out. Those forms generate tickets and the tickets are worked by people at either the help desk or whatever um, group that you decide you want to work them. ServiceNow has a lot of built-in functionality. It has tables for groups, for roles, and for users, of course. And these users are going to be all of your employees, whether they be somebody who is requesting something or someone who is working on fulfilling that request. Now, I don't want to put it in too small of a box because you can really do anything with ServiceNow. ServiceNow works with JavaScript. JavaScript is a full-fledged programming language, although it does get a lot of flack, but it's either for you or it's not. With JavaScript, you can write scripts in ServiceNow in your applications that will do just about anything that you want them to do. So it's, it's difficult to fully understand this without actually working with it and without actually working with the company. But if you have any takeaway from this point, it's ServiceNow allows quick application development, especially in systems that are based around users and records and large amounts of data. So what are the job prospects if you go into ServiceNow development? In my experience, they're very good. I was able to get a job right out of college. I interned for ServiceNow itself for 10 months. And uh, now I work in Maryland for a government contractor. That is a, a big point of that, is that uh, ServiceNow's cloud infrastructure is FedRAMP certified. That means that if you need it as you know a government contractor or maybe a government organization, you can have your instance of ServiceNow, all the applications you develop, et cetera, be put into a cloud that is 
audited and kept up to standard, very high security, uh, you'll pass all those tests. So a lot of companies that are either in the government contracting sector or just government organizations themselves are beginning to adopt ServiceNow. It solves a problem that the government has had, which is how do we develop robust applications that will have skilled labor out there for them if they need to hire them that don't cost a ton of money. And ServiceNow is an excellent, excellent answer to this question. So there are a lot of companies other than you know, FedRAMP, government contractors using ServiceNow, and there are tons of people in the private sector as well. It's just a very good way to develop quick IT applications that last for a very long time. Uh, most of the time, things are maintained in ServiceNow's cloud, so this takes away the need for companies to pay for the hardware infrastructure, and it works well enough that you can have a lot of users doing a lot of things at one time, and things will not generally grind to a screeching halt, especially if you've programmed your stuff right. So I have had excellent luck with ServiceNow. I still get contacted by recruiters all the time. It is a niche skill, but it's, um, it's very sought after right now. Now this is IT, this is tech, that could change at any given time, but at the moment it's doing very well. ServiceNow, the company, is also doing very well. So. The life of a developer in ServiceNow is one that I've grown to very much like. I get to work with small development teams because that's all we need to develop a, a robust application in ServiceNow. That makes it easier for me to directly work with the people who are you know, working on the same project that I am working on. Um, it's, it's good. It's generally good. I, I really do like it. There are very few limitations that you run into with ServiceNow if you really know how to program. I personally love the service portal part the most because that's using AngularJS and Bootstrap. Of course, you don't have to use Bootstrap if you don't want to. You can just do your own CSS and HTML. And that really makes it to where I can do just about whatever I want. Now, if that's practical or not is another question, because one good thing about ServiceNow, and it's one reason that companies pay so much to have the platform, is because they are constantly releasing new products. So if there's something that my company does that's rather unique, that doesn't really fit into a, a mold of what every other company does, uh, they will have me write an application for it, just from scratch, well, from scratch in ServiceNow. And that works very well does mean that I, you know, me and, and everyone else on the team has to maintain that application, but it, it's possible for me to write really any kind of logic, any kind of front end that we would want. Now, ServiceNow offers a lot of out of the box things. So in some cases, it's easier for me to take ServiceNow's, you know, made for every single company product and modify it to do what we want it to do than to actually write something from scratch. It's, um, it's kind of like you don't want to reinvent the wheel. So it's uh, generally there is a mixture of using GUI and encoding in JavaScript. If you know when you're doing the front end service portal stuff, especially if you're doing something from scratch, there is a lot of coding involved in Angular JS and uh, JavaScript. I found this to be quite a nice way to develop. I actually really enjoy it, but it does have a learning curve and it takes some time. If you are trying to get into being a ServiceNow developer, I would recommend learning uh, AngularJS, mostly the core concepts because some of it is handled by the ServiceNow platform. Beyond that, when you get into the back end, it's easier to do things with a GUI to a point, depending on how specific uh, people are who you work with about what they want and how different what they want is from what a standard company would want. So it is difficult to actually give you, you know, a number or anything because every project is different. Some things we do things that look just amazing, very hard. We leverage out of the box applications in order to make those things happen really quick. And it looks like we did absolutely miracle work in a very short period of time. Other times it's something that just no one out there is doing. It's something that our organization is doing and 
nobody else is doing it so it's you know we have to start it from from the ground up basically this does take more time however it takes a lot less time than it would have if we had decided to do it with something a little bit more um, a little bit more not out of the box a little bit more you know say I just want to write a Java application right so it would take a lot lot longer for me to write a lot of these things using Java than it would for me to do it in ServiceNow one of the big reasons for that is because ServiceNow takes care of a lot of stuff for you there are APIs built in that do things like database calls you know, pulling in data onto the client side your database is already there it's very easy to make a table because it's already set up there's no hardware that you have to deal with because generally it's hosted in the cloud so it's a lot easier for me to develop this application in ServiceNow and I can still make it do everything that it would have done if I had done it in a JavaScript or I'm sorry a Java application for the most part there are some exceptions but what it comes down to in ServiceNow is that you can pretty much always do exactly what someone is asking with one caveat ServiceNow upgrades over time they update the platform just just kinda like how Java is updated but anything that you decide to do instead of doing it you know you're trying to take something out of the box it means that you're gonna have to maintain that and when you upgrade to newer versions of the platform there's a chance that it will break and that is something that is time-consuming for anyone who's a ServiceNow developer or works in ServiceNow in general upgrades are difficult because it means everything has to be retested we have to figure out what isn't working anymore what code needs to be changed to work with the new way I wouldn't say this is they don't kill you every time with an upgrade <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot uh, they, they take it into account is what I should say they take into account the you know the customizations people have made the applications people have written and they attempt to not break those things however this is not perfect so you have to test everything which is a bit tedious and it can also be challenging when a uh, new you know updates been released to figure out you know just what it is that you have to do to fix certain things say a function in API was discontinued well now you're gonna need to figure out how can I do that with the new stuff and when something has just come out there's not always a ton of information out there on how to do it that's where ServiceNow uh, has support support generally comes with with ServiceNow and and companies pay for it and the good thing about the support is that it's available pretty much 24 7 the uh, support engineers are very helpful of course it's not perfect but you know what is as far as support goes for IT development platforms it's a lot better than most and it's definitely something that comes in handy if anything it's nice to have someone working with you on a problem instead of just facing it yourself and being alone so that is something that comes with ServiceNow generally it's difficult for me to really give you the perfect idea of what ServiceNow is just in a short video but this is what you're getting into if you want to be a ServiceNow developer I would recommend the career path I chose one good thing about being an IT developer is it is a bit more traditional than say if you go doing straight software development for a software company with very harsh deadlines and there's always the chance that when you finish a project your particular skill set will not be needed this is not true with ServiceNow with ServiceNow it is something that the organization will continue to use and the more skills you build with it the more valuable you will become to them because those applications will need to be maintained and they're going to want to continue developing app applications in ServiceNow because once they've started doing that they have this framework here now they have experience it's a lot easier for them to just do things in ServiceNow than it would be to split off on a different path and go do some type of uh, ad hoc kind of we're gonna just do this using you know a new program language like Kotlin or something like that it's much easier to just keep doing what you're doing using the same framework and there's very few things as far as information systems go the service now cannot do now you're probably not going to be doing virtual reality on it well I never want to say never but I wouldn't recommend it it's the thing is that for that space 
in your organization, ServiceNow will kind of become a staple. And it's, um, it's difficult to, to know what exactly will come your way when it comes to projects, but it is always different. That's one thing that I like is that every time I start a new project, the project is got its own set of challenges. I really enjoy when there's something that ServiceNow just doesn't do and we get to implement that on our own. It's very challenging and we can take that one particular challenge in the project and really focus on that one particular challenge because all of the smaller things we know we can do, ServiceNow has APIs for it, it's pretty much taken care of. We don't really have to worry about those little things. We can focus on the one big challenge. So in general, I would recommend working with ServiceNow. I'd recommend being a ServiceNow developer. Just quickly to get into it, what I did was I, I have an information technology degree. Um, I had an internship with ServiceNow as a support engineer for 10 months and then I went to a company to be a developer because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a developer. Now I do know of people who are trying to get into ServiceNow without having a degree. From what I understand that is possible. There are certifications that ServiceNow offers. They are pricey as far as the classes uh, to take to train for them as well as the exam itself but they can help you to get a job in my experience some organizations care about them and some do not but if you don't have a college degree it would certainly help to have one of them because it would give you something to show that you have experience with it now the difficult part with service now is that well this is one of the biggest problems that a lot of people run into and that's that it's difficult to just kind of do something on your own with it without being employed because it is an IT development platform very focused on information systems so there are developer instances you can go to developer.servicenow.com get yourself a developer instance and start working with it however you want without having to pay anything so that is a great way to get started but what I have found is if you are not working anywhere it can be difficult because you get this platform to do stuff in but you have no users and you have no no business need to write something so if you're just getting introduced to it it's difficult to really know and I really mean this in the most rudimentary form what it is that you're doing like what would I even develop in this because you don't have users you don't have people that need things and it's hard to look at that and say okay I'll develop an application that lets people do X because there are no people there's no need but if you can get past this then you can actually start developing applications you can develop service portals you can modify and use existing out-of-the-box functionality there's just a litany of things that ServiceNow offers that you can do things with and then you can put that on your resume you know once you've done it it's just a bit difficult for some people you know if you're lo learning something like Java you can write uh, a game if you want to do Android development you can write well a game generally that's what a lot of people do when they're just trying to feel out a language is they do a video game or something similar something they you know kind of have in their head that they themselves could use and that's difficult to do with ServiceNow because ServiceNow is meant to be used by multiple users but yeah if you can get past this, uh, it, it can be a very lucrative career. I can't say I actually have a lot of experience with how good the job opportunities are if you don't have any kind of degree. If you just go in, learn JavaScript, maybe learn Angular, and then start learning ServiceNow. I'm sure that are, there are jobs out there that you can get. I know that there are jobs these days in any kind of development field that do not require a degree. If you have some kind of certification that's going to help a lot if you've done maybe some kind of code boot camp that could help quite a bit even though ServiceNow is not the most heavy code development platform out there to really do what people want you to do in ServiceNow you really do have to know how to code and and JavaScript's how you're going to be doing that love it or hate it that's what you got so that's really what I have to say for this video hope it's been helpful and if you have any questions post them below have a good night